Hey, welcome back to another episode of Cop Tool, the authority on power tools. My name is Aaron, and today we're gonna do our 2018 job site table saw shootout. It's gonna be epic. We're gonna find out which of these beauties makes the best cut. We're gonna take a look at five key areas, safety, accuracy, ease of use, power, and the all important value, the price point. Now let's get right to it. Here are the contestants. In alphabetical order, in their professional dark blue is the Bosch 4100-09. Sporting their classic yellow color, we have the DeWalt DWE7491RS. Wearing the teal shorts and standing the tallest is the Makita 2705X1. The next contestant is the Saw Stop JSS MCA in classic black. And last but not least, the newest to market is the Skill Saw SPT 99-12, rocking the gray with red trim. First, we're going to look at safety. Most important features are the blade guard, riving knife, and Paul's system. Among other factors are the push stick, the power switch, and specialty sensors. While all of these saws have the three big safety features, there were a few additions that helped them stand apart. First up, the Bosch. The skill saw and Bosch have some obvious similarities in the design of the blade guard and riving knife, pretty much operate the same and both work well. We have to ding them for putting the push stick on the back of the saw, completely ungrabbable in a pinch. We gave it a seven out of 10. Okay, the DeWalt. At first look, the blade guard removal system looks cool with a release latch conveniently located on the side, but in practical use, it was really hard to reattach. A couple of us tried it with the same result, frustration. Additional note, there was no obvious way to leave the riving knife attached when we ripped 1 8 inch strips. The other saws allowed the riving knife to remain when removing the blade guard and pulse. We gave it a point for the excellent placement of the push stick, which is right on the fence where you're most likely to grab it and then put it back. Nice one, DeWalt. Got a 7 out of 10. The Makita. We had a little trouble with the Makita's blade guard system. The riving knife is supposed to pop out with spring-loaded action, but it didn't. It clearly wasn't the best on-off system of the pack. We did like the way you could lift the paws without removing them altogether. We gave the Makita an 8 out of 10. Now the saw stop. Well, this is clearly in another league for safety. Obviously, it's the only saw with the technology to actually stop the blade if it senses flesh touching it. But additionally, the blade guard, riving knife, and pawls came on and off way easier than the others. Plenty of room to reach in to lower the riving knife. Why doesn't everyone do that? Saw stop clearly shearing off the competition in this category. Yep, 10 out of 10. Finally, the skill saw. After using the unique guard removal systems on the other saws, we found we like the skill saw's old school system of removing the guard completely. Lift the cover, unscrew it, reattach the components. In the end, it's more probable that you reattach something that is not frustrating, even though it may take a little more time. Also a well-placed push stick slot that works very well. Gets a eight out of 10. Saw stop wins in the safety department. Next up, we looked at accuracy. You never know when you will need to rip a board at 33 and a half degrees, so when it's called for, you wanna know your saw can do it easily and quickly. When we measured the fence for accuracy, we found them all to be very close to dead on right out of the box. We're talking two one hundredths of an inch or less. The adjustment screws for all of them are easy to find by referencing the manual. It takes about five to 10 minutes to properly align the blade if you're not satisfied with the deviation from front to back. All right, the Bosch gets a seven out of 10 for accuracy. Again, the fence alignment was great and easy to adjust. The bevel adjust was smooth and well-balanced to make for an easy setup. Kind of sounds like a good wine, but I digress. The miter gauge is heavier. It's similar to the Makita and longer, so we like that too. We gave the DeWalt a six out of 10. The miter alignment was fine, but the fence was not sturdy. There was a little too much play in it. The bevel adjustment is average, no half degree increment markings, which isn't a big deal, but it would be nice. And the miter gauge is 12 inches, a little short if you're trying to run a larger board through at an angle. We gave the Makita a nine out of 10. It was the most accurate out of the box. The fence was rock solid and adjustable, the only one with front to back adjustments, and a little ding for the magnifying glass on the fence gauge. A very nice bevel adjustment with a dial to fine tune the setting and a nice long miter gauge. 
We gave the saw stop a 9 out of 10, very accurate, right out of the box, like the Makita. The miter gauge is a little bit shorter than the Makita, but still great. But the bevel adjustment is about the best. It's a very smooth fence and it makes for very easy, accurate cuts. The skill saw gets a 7 out of 10. The fence alignment was really good. It showed the same degree of accuracy as the other saws. And the bevel adjustment was super smooth and easy to set. The miter gauge was just fine. So for accuracy, we have a tie for first place between the Makita and Saw Stop. This next category is a big one. For ease of use, we looked at several things. Accessories, storage, portability, stability, dust collection, and all the adjustable components like the fence and extension, the bevel and the miter gauge. There are several things to note about each saw in this category. The Bosch. Accessories stored away okay, but the push stick on the back of the saw, again, why? The fence and extension worked great, but the rulers were a little confusing. And the stand mechanism was the least obvious and most difficult of them all. If you're not paying attention, you might lower it before raising it to collapse the stand. Then, when going downstairs, the metal bars of the stand protruded beyond the wheels, clanging and hitting the steps. Likely, this would cause damage to the stand and the steps, and going up was no better. The center of gravity made it awkward, though the weight was not that bad. We did notice less sawdust and fewer particles flying up and hitting me in the face with the Bosch. And less dust in your hair and eyes is always a good thing. The Bosch gets a 6 out of 10. Next up, the DeWalt. The fence and extension mechanism are awesome for speed. It's high for ease of use on that. However, when you lock the fence with the latch, you can still move it a little with the dial. It would be nice if it was locked tighter. Don't want any play in the fence. And storing away the accessories was obvious and easy. This one is the most different for portability because the wheels are not on the ground once you set it in place. The leg structure is solid and it's the most stable with a nice wide base for the legs. But for quick shifting around a site, you have to drag it around or break it down and that's a little bit of a pain. The additional dust collection port on the blade guard should be useful, but in most cases, it just got in the way. Even with the vac on, we still had a lot of sawdust in front of the saw, meaning a lot of it hit me in the face while cutting. Pretty easy to get up and down stairs, Pretty heavy, but doable for one guy. The DeWalt earns a 7 out of 10. All right, the Makita. As we mentioned before, the Makita's blade guard system refused to pop out. That was a pain. The fence system is easy to use since you don't completely take it on and off. The extension also very easy to use and accurate and very sturdy. It's the only fence system that allows you to adjust the fence for accuracy. So for finer detailed work, this is great. We don't like the magnifying glass on the fence gauge. We're going to measure with a tape measure anyway, so we prefer a gauge that's easier to read for roughing in the measurement. Storing the accessories was not obvious and we struggled on a few components. It was very stable, probably due to its overall weight of 115 pounds, but the portability was not good at all. We liked the hydraulics of the lift, but it was much heavier and very difficult to go up and down stairs. Definitely a two-man job. We gave the Makita a 6 out of 10. Now the saw stop. The fence mechanism is super easy to use and very accurate. A nice smooth surface makes it nicer than the others and the extension glides and locks really well. As far as accessories go, the storage compartment under the extension is a great idea. Definitely the easiest way to store smaller accessories. The quick blade extender is sweet. The bevel adjust is the most accurate with a fine tuned dial. Probably because of the onboard safety technology, the power switch and lights are a little more complicated, but that's the trade-off for saving your fingers. A little confusing, but no biggie once you read it over. Weight and portability are not great, difficult to move because of the center of gravity, and could do the stairs with one person, but it was difficult. The saw stop gets an 8 out of 10. Finally, the skill saw. Really solid and obvious accessory storage, which saves the life of your equipment over time. And if you're not tossing the miter gauge and fence into a bucket at the end of the day, it'll save a bunch of wear and tear. The fence works just like the DeWalt, except it locked in better. And without a doubt, the most portable of the pack, super easy to move. The way it folded up was great. The center of balance was perfect with the longer extended handle and the extra large wheels were amazing. We think everyone should use wheels like this. It was a very noticeable difference in portability and weight. Going up and down stairs was easy as pie. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Skill saw gets a 9 out of 10. So the skill saw shaves off the competition and wins the ease of use category. All of these saws come with a 10 inch blade, but to make our tests more consistent, we changed out the factory blades with a Diablo 24 tooth ripping blade. 
The power category is where it gets a little subjective. Each manufacturer is going for the ideal blend of RPMs and torque, which is why you can't simply say, oh, the no load speed for the skill saw is 5,000. It must be more powerful. At the end of the day, you want the cut to feel smooth, to have minimal burning, and for the saw to keep running smoothly, even if it gets hot. We cut a 4x8 sheet of plywood to see how they would handle something that gives you less control and more potential for twisting and uneven pressure. The next power test was ripping 1 8 inch strips from a piece of oak. This is very hard wood and really put these saws to the test. Finally, we ripped 5 half inch strips from a standard pine 2x6 to see how that felt and to see if we could get the motor to shut down from overheating, and only one of the saws crapped out on us. First up is the Bosch. My assistant pinched the wood strips on the oak ripping test, but the Bosch had absolutely no trouble. Ooh, watch out for that kickback. The power felt strong and a step above average. We especially noticed it on the plywood. The Bosch gets a hearty 10 out of 10. Next, the DeWalt. Middle of the pack for power, kind of average, but then again, this is a fairly powerful pack of saws. The blade slowed down some, but did not give out, so we gave the DeWalt 8 out of 10. The Makita had the most audible variation in blade speed. It actually felt less powerful than the DeWalt. One of the repair technicians from Ohio Power Tool walked in during our test and immediately noted it sounded like it was working really hard. Not the best on power. Felt like we had to work harder to get the same result. We gave the Makita a 7 out of 10. The Saw Stop. It handled the 8th inch oak strips like a champ. Very smooth, probably due to its actual power, but for sure helped by the smooth surface of the fence. Very slick. The saw cut through the plywood like butter. Very nice. But it got interesting when we ripped the 2x6. The saw stop overloaded on the fourth cut. The power didn't change, but it tripped the overload mechanism, likely because of the additional electronics. If you're trying to work fast and this happened, you'd probably be frustrated. So that's definitely worth noting. We're giving the saw stop an 8 out of 10 for power. We would have given it a 9 if not for the power overload incident. Finally, the skill saw. Pretty dang smooth ripping both the hardwood and plywood. No trouble with the 2x6 either, even though my assistant pinched the wood together when he grabbed it. Props to skill saw for good power. Seems like the worm drive is living up to its reputation. Gets a 9 out of 10. So Bosch wins the power category, but the skill saw was a notable runner-up. The last category is value. The price point for these saws does vary a little bit, with the clear outlier being the saw stop, which is the only one with the advanced technology for stopping the blade. The prices listed here are for January of 2018. The Bosch sells for around $599. We give it an 8 out of 10 for value. The DeWalt goes for around $550. We gave the DeWalt an 8 out of 10 for value also. The Makita sells for anywhere from 730 to just over a grand, but mostly around 800. We gave the Makita a 7 out of 10. The saw stop goes for 1299. That's anywhere from 5 to 800 bucks more than the competitors. Phew. We gave the saw stop a 6 out of 10 for value. Then finally, the skill saw goes for 499 bucks. This one gets a 9 out of 10 and takes this category. Okay, it's time to tally up the scores and declare our winner. But before we declare the Cop Tool Grand Champion, we think it's worth mentioning that we gave each category equal value to the others. If one category is more important to you, then you should skew your scores accordingly before making your own purchase. For example, if power is most important to you, then multiply the power category by two and you'll get your winner. Okay, these are all great saws, but here are the final scores. They were all really close. In fifth place, the DeWalt coming in with a total of 36 points out of 50. In fourth place, the Makita landing just above the DeWalt with 37 points. And landing in third place, the Bosch. It performed really well in all the categories and gets a combined total of 38. And now, the big moment. The saw stop gets a 41, just edged out by the skill saw with a total of 42. The skill saw SPT9912 wins by a narrow margin. We've declared our winner, but we really can't finish this until we address one more thing. And that's the value score of the saw stop. It came out as a six. It's pretty expensive and that's why, you know, several hundred dollars more than any of the competition. Normally when you pay that much more for a saw, you're going to get 
a higher quality, more power, more accuracy, maybe even other features that you wouldn't get. When you buy the saw stop, what you're really paying for is insurance. If you happen to be one of those folks, heaven forbid, that falls forward and lays your hand down on a saw stop blade, you are potentially saving yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars in medical bills, lost wages and time, and potentially even your entire career. So if the insurance is important to you, then the value score goes from a 6 to a 10. And in that case, the saw stop wins, hands down, with all 10 fingers still attached. All right, there you have it. But remember, that's only half the story. For the full story, head over to coptool.com. This year, we're gonna do a bunch more full product reviews and comparison videos. So make sure you subscribe and you won't miss a thing. I'm Aaron, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.